What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part three of our Zendikar Rising set review. We have green, gold, and colorless cards, including the lands today. And I got Robert here, as you know, because who else? Who else would it be? Adventure awaits today, Robert. And as you guys know, you can check out nordvpn.org slash Frank Lepore. You'll get 68% off a two-year subscription along with one month free, which is a great deal. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you're looking for an internet security solution, specifically VPN, you should check them out. They have I service. actually I actually have a sale for 69% off uh, my internet security. So if, you know. Are you done now? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> also check out manatraders.com another great sub uh, sponsor of the stream you can get 20% off the first three months of any subscription they have a, an amazing magic online subscription service you can check out the link and promo code down below so check those guys out adventure awaits two mana for a sorcery look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a creature card from among them put it in your hand put the rest in the bottom if you didn't put a card into your hand this way draw a card I kind of like that I love that. it I like that a lot because you never whiff now Zero whiffsies. Why was this so hard to do? Well, let's be honest. They, they they made it cost two instead of one. There were two mana cards that did some similar things in this. Like, like uh, like you know, put a land or a creature into your hand, stuff like that. Yeah, but they went to the graveyard normally. It's the price you pay. I don't, I'd rather draw a card. I put it on the list. I think it's good. I like this card. It should be on the list. It's, it's a once upon a time... Except it's not broken. Listen, we've <laughs> we, we've discussed this too. Like this card finds lands, which means it can find sorceries and instants. Like it's it's good. What does oh, MFC no, stand for? No, no, John, no, what is MFC lands? What is that? Modal face cards? <laughs> What's happening right now? It can't grab what? What did you say, Robert? Uh, it, it can grab lands. I said instant sorcery. That was a mistake. I meant the creature ones. Right. If there's a creature on the front side and a land on the back side, it can grab those. So again, it's kind of like grabbing a land. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's good. Multi-face cards. That's good. Okay. Ancient Green Warden. This card seems like it's going to be great in like a commander format, but I don't think it's great in standard. It's a 5-7 for 6 with reach. Uh, th the weirdest creatures have reach, and the weirdest creatures don't have reach. Like Ulamog, which is clearly taller than this thing, has <laughs> doesn't have reach. This guy doesn't even look like he's bigger than one tree, and he has reach. I don't understand. You may play lands from your graveyard. Seems good. If a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers twice. This was the uh, this was one of the cards that that card I was talking about combos with. So it uh, the card that, that you sacrifice the lands right? Sure, this lets but you play like, from your graveyard. yeah, but you could just like say the same about Crucible of Worlds, right? No, but it's it's the doubling effect. Hold on, I'll find the other card. I like this card. I think it's great. Do you? Yes. So you want me to put it on the you want me to put it on the list is what you're saying? I think power level um, of this card is high enough to put it on the list. Yes. All cards that have the word Green Warden in their title are usually just good enough. Like Green Warden of Marasa, I thought that guy was pretty good. He was like two Eternal oh. Lances. Ancient I, Green Warden. Yeah, I like Green Warden Marasa. That was one of my favorite cards. Yeah, same. Okay, so I figured it out, Frank. Uh huh. I'm listening. So if you have Lotus Cobra, right, and you play the um. The, is it lith lithoform? Yeah, and here he's lithoform, I think. Right, so you sacrifice all your lands. Uh huh. All draw, of them. Draw, draw a bunch of cards. Uh huh. And then, then you play all the lands that you sacrifice, and then you lithoform again. From the graveyard. With what you drew. Huh. And you could draw your entire deck. What does that do? It allows you to Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> it was a six card combo. It was it was a three card combo. Okay, you have okay. So ancient green warden's not in the mix now. Yeah, it lets you play play from your graveyard. Okay, so it's Lotus Cobra, ancient green warden, and Thassa's Oracle. No, uh, in the lithoform. And here is lithoform, multiple copies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's four card combo. This is standard. What do you want from me? I'm gonna. I want something better. Gonna four, four 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 hasty hasty can't be blocked. Dude, Ashaya, for four, no, soul standard. of the wild. This is Ishaya's second appearance. The first one was uh, Nissa's, the flip Nissa's uh, negative two ability. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, Ashaya is a star star elemental. Uh, it has power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. So presumably you're going to play this on turn 5 at the earliest. It's going to be 5-5. Five, five. Non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. This card's going to be so good with Nyssa. Oh, wait. <laughs> I hope nothing in Magic is ever good with Nyssa again. Yeah. Is this card any good? I mean, so what does it do for you? It, it basically just gets... Its power and toughness is equal to your creatures and your lands? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm just not super impressed by it. I mean, it's a 5-mana five 5-5. Five, five. Right, but if you have, like, two creatures, then it's a 7-7 seven, seven because those are now lands. Why is this good with Query on Ranger? Oh, that's a that's a Kappa face. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to pass. Yeah, I don't think it's good. Broken Wings, three mana, destroy an artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. See, this is the return to nature type card I was hoping for. I like it. See, gr green upgrades naturalize into return. Oh, this is still green. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> do you play this, you play this over return to nature right like so one of them they both have destroy an artifact or an enchantment That's one of them has exile one graveyard card this has destroy creature flying Depends actually euro might be better right i don't know like like it might be better to exile one euro than it is to kill a random flying creature in standard that may not return even to be... return to nature is better that's weird it's still i think it's still good though right it's pretty cool cards flexible i like it i like flexible I mean, it's just like Crushing Canopy, but better now, because Crushing Canopy was destroying enchantment or, or a creature with flying. Now yes. you have an artifact, so it's literally an upgrade to an existing magic card that wasn't terrible. Oh, new creatures trigger landfall. I don't think I'm playing a five drop in my landfall deck. Well, I guess the Avenger of Zendikar. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Avenger of Zendikar, does that loop? Let's. We'll get to it. I don't know what it's called, but we'll get to it, okay? Okay, yeah, sorry. Canopy Bailout, 4-3 for 4. Whenever a land enters battlefield, it gets plus 2, plus 2. No. Okay. Too expensive. Crag Plate Bailout. I like this card a lot. 7 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. It can't be countered. <laughs> it has Hexproof, and it has Haste. If it was kicked for 3 mana, so so 10 mana, it gets 4-1-1 one, one counter. So it's a 10-10 ten, ten Trample Haste that can't be countered. No, no Trample, Hexproof. Um... <laughs> what are you laughing at here? This because this is this is a card that I, I I I would I would easily say Frank loves this card. This and the dragon, the leyline dragon. I like big green idiots, man. What do you want? <laughs> but, but like, this... okay, so I compare this to to Carnage Tyrant, right? Like Carnage Tyrant costs six. This costs seven. They both have hexproof. They both can't be countered. This has haste, so it's it's essentially attacking. You're both attacking on turn seven with them, right? Yeah. Only in the late game, this is a ten ten. This is better than this is better than um, Carnage Tyrant. Well, Carnage Tyrant has Trample. This has heck. This has Kicker. Oh, it doesn't have Trample. Right. It has Haste and Kicker. So it's different for sure. Yeah, but you know what though? In like mid range matchups against creatures, like this is a big dummy that they can't target. Also, like in like against like control decks, like this guy's pretty hard to deal with. I think. Ah, but he costs seven and not six. That's it's too much, dude. Seven uh, drops. That's too much. But six drop, you're not even attacking with it on turn. Like you're attacking with it on turn seven anyway. So what's the problem? Yeah, but you got the dummy out on turn six. Oh, that's great. That's really relevant. That seems really. So then I can untap and just kill it, and you've dealt no damage, right? Like I could just planar cleansing, and you've dealt nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> put it on seven confirmed greater than six. I'm gonna put it on the list because I hate you. But <laughs> 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 that was a good laugh. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a good time. Rob, don't spit out your drink, buddy. I know I didn't. Dauntless Survivor. It's a 1-1 one, one for 2. It looks like Wolverine. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. This is just a, an Iron Plate Beetle. It's, it's already playable because of the art, right? It's, it's, yeah, it is, for sure. Gnarled Colony, also playable because of the art. 2-2 two, two for 2, with a kicker of 3. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with 2-1-1 one, one counters. Each creature you control with 1-1 one, one counters trample. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. Or a 4-4 four, for four, 5 with Trample. That gives other creatures Trample, too. This is a great for a limited card. This, remind, this doesn't remind you of the Kavu? It does. It reminds me of Kavu Predator a lot, actually. That yeah. is a 5-5 five, five for 5, but like the scaling is very similar. Would you touch this? I don't think so. Seriously? I don't think they're friendly. Yeah, he looks friendly to me. <laughs> I mean, look at the size of his back, dude. He's, like, he's made for riding. He's got handles. Oh, dear. <laughs> Inscription of Abundance again. Love it. 
Again, they only made Sultai versions of these. Which is interesting. There's no white, there's no black. Or there's no white and there's no uh, red. There were no red or white inscriptions, which is weird. Uh, two mana. Choose one. If the spell is kicked, choose any number. The, the kicker is three. So for five... Like, this is also an instant, too, which is great. This is the one this instant. Good. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creatures. So very similar to Abzan Charm. Target player gains X where X is the X life where X is the greatest power among creatures they control. And target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So like very fine. Like for five mana, you can put two counters on something, fight something, and gain X life. Like this is pretty good. This is my favorite one. And it's an instant again, so like pretty sweet. This is my favorite one, and this to me is the most playable one because a green deck, even a low to the ground green deck, getting to five mana is not a lot. No, and it's not a lot at all. This is a good one. I like this one. Like, uh, what doth life said? Mara said no red or white because they tried to make them and they sucked, so they gave up. Wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right, well, that makes sense. But I hate, I hate incomplete cycles, man. Like, it really tilts me. I like, I want to see all five of them, and I want to like, I don't know. I just like. It's just cycles. because you like them, so you want to have five instead of three. Well, also, it doesn't make sense. Like, why is there a green one but no red one? I mean, it, it mm -hmm. makes sense once you hear the story, I guess, but it's not a fulfilling reason. Oh my God, there's a human being behind you. <laughs> iridescent horn that that person came right out of your lab <laughs> iridescent horn beetle three four for five at the beginning of your end step create a one one green insect creature token for each plus one plus one counter you've put on creatures you control this turn this is a build around unlimited for sure but no one's building yeah. around a five mana card in standard like this this would have to be like an enchantment and cost like three or four not in my not on my watch buddy Jiraga Visionary, 3-2 for 4. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um, This is not the type of Visionary that I'm expecting in standard No, this, right is not, this is not a Visionary we want to play with. I would rather have a 2-2 two, two for 3 that draws me a card and also taps for mana. Kazandu Nectar Pot. Uh, would you touch this, Rob? Not touch that. 1-3. <laughs> look at his big butt, though. 1-3 yeah, for 2. Yeah, it's gooey. Land, whenever a lander is a battlefield, you gain a life. So this is basically uh, the... Um, uh, Jotty Offshoot. Jotty Offshoot, yes. Yeah. It's a 1-3 instead of an 0-3. It costs 2 instead of 1, but it is the same landfall ability. So, Kazandu Stomper. 6-5 <laughs> yeah. for 6 with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, return up to 2 lands you control to their owner's hand. Great for limited. Really good play because you can return lands you've, you've played as yeah. spells. Also worth noting, we haven't mentioned it before, but every pack is going to have a dual face land card in it. So you might get the mythic, you might get a common, but in limited, you're at least going to have access to three of them. You know, depending on your packs you this open. Seem, so. This seems almost like a bomb in, in limited. I mean, it's, it's it, it can definitely be like draw two cards. And it's turn six, so like you're only going down to four mana, and that's not terrible. So Yeah. Lotus Cobra. I'm going to put Lotus Cobra on this. We all know this card is great. And the friggin' alternate art is fantastic. As you can see in the background of this set review. Um, do we need to say anything about Lotus Cobra? It, sc it scares me, honestly. Would you touch it? I, uh, no. Uh, well, actually, yeah. Hmm. I, well, Cobra? No, I wouldn't touch Cobra. What were, what were you thinking? Well, like, I, like, cause I, I, like, if I see a snake in the yard, I normally pick it up. But if I know it's a cobra, I'm not going to touch a cobra. That's a good idea. That's solid advice. Rob's gardening advice, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> if, it's, if you see a if cobra, black, you can touch it. don't pick it up. Yeah. Might of Marasa. This art is worth worth it alone. Uh, two mana. Kicker for three. So it's either two mana or five mana. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. If it was kicked, it gets plus five, plus five. So I don't like the card. I agree with you. The art's fantastic. That yeah. art looks to me like he's like he wakes up every morning and he goes to his little his little branch and then the, the stupid something does that to him. And he looks like ah oh, not again. This frog has no idea what's happening or why. <laughs> he's, it just happens all the time though. He's like what not again. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Marasa brute three three for three. Okay, keep keep doing your thing. Wow. Marasa sproutling three three for three. This is the same card. Uh, plant elemental kicker is two when it enters the battlefield if it was kicked return a card with a kicker from your graveyard your hand this is good for unlimited yeah it's and it's honestly if there's a kicker deck that that's pretty decent it's just better than this guy it's not strictly better because this guy's a warrior which is relevant and this mm -hmm. guy's just a plant elemental but it is better yeah so that's cool 
Nissa's Zendikon. Four mana for an enchant land. Enchanted land is a 4-4 elemental creature with reach and haste. When the land dies, return that card to its owner's hand. I don't like it. I don't like it either because you're not. If you play this on a on, on turn four on your land, like okay, a you lose the ability of the land. Not you don't lose it, but like if you want to attack with the the creature, you do. Oh, it doesn't have vigilance. Right, and you're also you're not even gonna be able to attack until turn five, and then you can't play a five drop because you're attacking with one of your lands, and it can't block on turn four. Like, no. No, this is bad. In limited, I could see playing this and just like. Oh, oh it's a cool, four I have four nothing. Four. It's just a 4-4 four, four haste, but, you know, it's, it's I had a land. But, like, yeah. in Constructed, like, no. Orin Reef Ooze, 2-2 two, two for 3. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. So this is just an upgraded Iron Shell Beetle or whatever that Wolverine guy was. Whenever Orin Reef Ooze attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each attacking creature with a plus 1-plus one, plus 1 counter on it. This is good. I agree. This is good, and it can get out of hand really quickly because it doesn't just put a plus one plus one counter on, on an attacking creature with a one one counter. It puts it on all of your one one cre- all, all of your one one counter creatures. Yeah, this is really good, especially with Conclave Mentor, and you're doubling up counters on everything. It's just that you're just snowballing to a win. What's a Conclave Mentor? Conclave is a two two for two that whenever you would put a counter, you put two counters on it. Oh, it's on our list, is it not? That's on from another set. Oh. Mentor. Why is this not ringing a bell to me? I'm also thinking of the one one for two that puts a counter on a creature at the beginning of combat. The one, the green creature. Uh, we did see that one in this set. Yeah. Yeah. Rabid bite. Two mana. Target creature you control does damage equal to its power to creature you don't control. This is so interesting because like they have this mechanic which is unnamed. And they also have Fight, which is very similar. Both these mechanics are very, very similar. This one shows up in, like, every set, but it still doesn't have a name. Just give this a name. Yeah, like, the card, Isn't it called, card like, Sucker Punch? Bite. It's called Bite, isn't it? Like, isn't that, like, the... Bite uh, is one of them, the, yeah. the unofficial name for it? Prey Upon? Prey Upon is Fight. No, Prey Upon is Fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, like, I like this version better, obviously, because my green creature doesn't die. Yeah. But, um... Again, it's weird that it's not templated. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have its own name. Whereas fight, which is almost an identical, they're both mechanics that have an identical wording every time they're used. So yeah. just template it, give it a name, and call it a day. Mm-hmm. Reclaim the wastes. One one green, kicker of three. So it's either one green or four. Search your library for basic land card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. If this spell is kick, search your library for two basic land cards instead of one. I wish this card said when you kick it, you search for two land cards. I, I was thinking that. I was waiting for it. Yeah. Uh, when you play it for one mana, you search for a basic land. When you play it for four, you search for any two lands. Yeah. That could be too good, though. You'd have you to think? make it a higher rate. Searching for two of any land? Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's two Tron lands, right? Like, I'll get a Urza's Tower, Urza's Power Plant. Yeah, but it's also four. It's still two Tron lands. Sure. That's not. That's not. It's not a spell set. It's not a spell tutor. You spell. can't search for the. Can't search for the dual face cards, with uh. For uh not lands correct. In Keep in mind, guys. The dual. The dual face for the dual face cards, they are whatever their their card type is whatever they are on the front. The yeah. lands are their backside. It's like you can't search your library for a delver for a an aberrant, aberration whatever the insectile aberration right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could literally pay for a tutor for uh, for thespian stage and dark depths. I don't. I don't think that that's that. That's too powerful. It's four mana, and you're talking about legacy. Legacy has ways to get to four mana very easily. There's also crop rotation. That's that's only search for one land, and you got to get rid of a land to do it. it. They're different cards. Is my point. My point is like in the dark depths deck, you never want to do it on like turn two anyway. You want to do it when you have protection backup, like blossoming defense or something. Why do you? How come every time like why do you? How come every time we're like around a group of people, that's when you're trying to be mean to me. And call me dumb. I never said that. Okay. <laughs> Why well, you always have to impress your friends? <laughs> Stop being mean to me in front of my friends. I never did that. <laughs> Ro- Roiling Regrowth. Three mana. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Put them out of the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. This, uh, is this is just an upgraded Harrow. It still costs three. It's still an instant. But the sacrifice a land is not part of the cost. So if this gets countered, you don't just get blown out. Yeah, this card's very good. Yeah, it's literally just a ramp card. Like, I'll sacrifice my swamp for two islands, and now I have better mana. So, 
Again, basic land. Is it going on the list, right? This, this seems yes. constructed playable. This is definitely going to see play. Definitely. And unlike... I mean, so, like, it's nice because you can also pay three for this if they're on their turn, put two lands into play, and then counter something if you have a two-mana counter spell. You know what I mean? Uh, yep. No, they these are tapped. Harrow's untapped. Oh. Yeah, but so not strictly hold, better than Harrow. You can hold you can hold this up though instead of, and a counter. This is why I'm so yeah, this is why I'm so uh reluctant to use strictly better because magic has so many corner case situations that cards would not be strictly better in. Um that to say strictly means in every possible situation, and a lot of times that's not the case. Um Yeah, so it's still good. Not as good as Harrow. Or not not better than different not than strictly Harrow. Better. Not strictly better than Harrow. Anyway, scale the heights. Three mana. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to one target creature. You gain two life. You may play an additional land. Draw a card. I'm going to put this on the list. You think? It does so much. This, like, if... Uh, it's three mana. Like, I feel like three mana is just wrong for this effect. I mean, you you, you play Euro, right? Like, that's literally the same effect. Draw yeah, a card, but... play an extra land, gain two life instead of three, and you get a counter, right? Like, yeah, it's just Euro, Euro like... This goes with, with Euro. It's just your it's it's Uro number five through eight, right? Yeah, this is good. And the one one counter is nice. The two life is nice. Like, is like if you're looking for this effect, like, I think it's good. I mean, it obviously can't cost two, right? We know that. Correct. If if yeah, if <laughs> can you imagine how bad Explorer looks if they just print this at two? They're like, oh yeah, give a plus one plus one counter and gain two life as well. That's how mine rot. That's how mine rot feels about that one card that it's we true, saw I earlier. <laughs> Scoot swarm. Three mana for a 1-1. One, one. All right, I'm just going to pass. It's not impressive. Landfall. Whenever a land enters a battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one green insect token. Uh, if you control six or more, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. Two things about this. Uh -huh. One, I hope there are Scoot Swarm tokens in the packs. Because I hate when cards make tokens of themselves and you have to like keep track of it with like the back of a card and or like a basic image. land or something. Right. I like having the actual token when a card makes a token of itself. Yeah. Just include that. Uh, number two, this card seems like a fucking nightmare to keep track of. I love this card. All right, I make two Scoot Swarms. Okay, uh, play a land. Make three Scoot Swarms. Uh, play a land. Make six Scoot. Like it's like, oh, are you serious? Like, what's happening right now? Like that's it's. It would, I feel like it's just. This this <laughs> seems like a nightmare. I love this card. If you love it enough to put on the list. Oh, absolutely! I love this card. Really? Yeah, this card. This card seems really sweet. Okay, I'll put it on there. All right, we're we're gonna keep going. Yeah, I'm just I'm admiring it. I like it a lot. I don't think it's any. I don't think it's good enough to I'm play, just, but I'm just. I love it. Why is it on the list then? Because I love it. All right, it's gonna be on there out of love. Skyclave pickaxe, one green. When it enters battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Okay. Landfall. Whenever a land enters battlefield, the creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Like I don't like this. I like when this one, like even less because this does nothing without lands. It's literally an equipment that does nothing. You don't like this. You do? Yeah. Are you? I guess wow, it's one green. Dude, it's one oh, green. Oh, God, you're you play, right. You play the red. You play the step links. And then you play this. Then you play a land. You attack for four. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. That's really good. Yeah, the equip warrior. I got distracted by the fact that it does nothing when it if, if yeah. you don't have lands. Like, it does nothing, right? But because of the casting cost is one green, because it equips automatically, and because it's plus two, plus two, it's pretty good. I guess it's good. This card, this card can get out of hand. I mean, I would look at this card as, um, like, having your one drop or your two, like your plated geopede or your step links, and just having like an extra two that you could just tack on to anything else. I mean, it doesn't have to be on even those creatures. Like this turns any creature into a plated geopede. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So, all right, it's on the list, Robert. Spring mantle cleric, five mana for a two three. It enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. Yeah. So let's say you're playing a two-color deck. It's a, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's regularly going to be a 4-5. Still five. not good enough. No, it's not good enough for Constructed, right? No. Um, you can pump three creatures with it in, turn, in one turn. How do you... I mean, like... Sure, you can go... Well, what? How? No, wait, how? How, how are you... Whatever, how? Like, you have to play three different lands. 
Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two. Yeah, they'll, you'll keep it, but so not only would you have to have three different lands, you'd have to have the other three, six mana. I mean, so you're going to have like a fetch land and you're going to... Okay, but then you'd have to have nine mana and or six mana and then two fetch... Like how two fetch lands? Like, I don't know. That's I mean, like that, that situation seems ambitious for sure. There's more and more comments that keep popping up. So, uh, land and two explore like... fetch lands and two explores. <laughs> you know, but if you have all these cards, you're getting a lot of value on turn nine. Uh, one one green for a sorcery strength of solidarity choose target creature put a one one counter on it for each creature in your party not bad if this was an instant it'd be i think it'd be much better and i don't think it would be busted at instant i think it would be a playable combat trick i think at sorcery speed it's just not that great (laughs) you gotta love you gotta love someone in chat when they can i don't want to say admit but like they can recognize what they're saying yeah it just got worse it's like then they hit you with turn 14 it's nuts i appreciate you buddy (laughs) That's awesome. This is not going on the storm swarm shambler zero zero for a green guys. Probably the strongest card in the set. Clearly it enters the battlefield with a one, one counter. So a one, one, whenever a creature you control with a one, one counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, create a one, one green insect creature token. Whenever a creature you control with a one, one counter. Okay. So this is like, this is just a bad, um, what's the artifact that makes flying artifacts when it dies. Triskelavis? No, no, no. The the not walking ballista, but the other one that makes hangar back walker. Yeah, this is a bad hangar. Well, this is also like a bad thorn lieutenant. Thorn lieutenant's like whenever it's targeted, you make a one one elf. Like the thing is, like this is a one one creature. So like whenever it's targeted, it's only gonna like it's, it's just gonna die. Like whenever creature you control one because the target is and it's also an opponent control. So it's not like you could pump this guy to make a one one. Yeah. Like. You know, there's no con- there's no tricks you can do. This is just a one one that whenever it gets targeted by the opponent, which will kill it, it you get a one one out of it. So so this is great. I, actually, the more I look at this card in in a green white and like a counters deck, this card's very good. Yeah. It's Far. a good one drop. It's a one drop that's a two two. If you have if that's a court. thing, but I mean right, like that's like saying like in a standard mill deck the crab is really good. Yes, right. If that exists, sure. Yeah, but like. I'm- that's what, that's what we said about the rogue stuff, right? Like, they look like yeah, junk, but, I didn't, but in, I didn't put that you know, shit together. on the list either. Oh, I thought we did. All right, I put Hagra, like, I put the, the Black Bloom Rogue on there. That's the only one I put on there, I think. That was specific to, like, a rogue mill strategy. Whatever, man. It also doesn't trigger on abilities, right? So if they, like, ping it, you get nothing out of it. It has to be a spell. It has to be something the opponent controls. And it only targets... It only affects creatures with 1-1 counters on it. It's a removal spell. It's what it is. When they target your creature with a removal spell, right. you get a dude. If they, when they kill your guy, you get a 1-1. You get a 1-1. I wish it... Like, if it was... If, you, if it was you get a number of 1-1s equal to the number of 1-1 counters on it, I'd be like, well, that's pretty good. That seems busted. Because then it incentivizes you to put counters on it, right? Like, to be more yeah. aggressive about that. And also, like that's literally the same as Hangerback Walker. You get the number of count. You get a number of one ones. Yeah. The number of counters. So it's not better than Hangerback Walker there. Or if the ability on this card said put a one one counter on target creature you control, then again you're playing into the whenever a creature you control with a counter on it, you know becomes the target. Then like, I feel like this card is 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 non synergistic with itself, right? Like because you're only putting one one counters on it. But by putting 1-1 one, one counters, you're not make, making it any better. Like, as a 3-3 three, three with 3 counters on it, it's not better than a 1-1 one, one with 1 counter on it. You're still going to get the same benefit when it dies. One one guy. Well, it becomes a lightning rod at that point when you make it a 3-3. Three, three. But you've already invested 2 turns and haven't attacked with it once. You know what I mean? Like, I spent a turn putting a counter on it. I spent a turn putting a counter on it. I get a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I just foresee a Conclave Mentor deck... So I think that I think that's why I think this card is good. I have I visions get... of Conclave mentors. <laughs> that card's doo doo, Robert. No, it's not. No, this card, Swarm Shambler. No, it's not. It's doo doo. I'd touch it. I mean, yeah, it's a zero zero, and it's like a mushroom anyway, so it's probably not. You'll be <laughs> fine. If it had vigilance again, like if it had vigilance, if I can attack with it and activate, cool. One 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 mana one one with death touch, but. Unlike the scorpions and snakes of old, this is an elf rogue, which is two relevant creature types. This card's good. I'm putting it on the list. I uh, yeah, one with death touchers definitely see play from time to time. I love the art in this. He's putting poison on his blade. I do too, actually. It's very World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. Um, he's like, I don't know. I never fucking played that game. What am I a nerd? I, no, I didn't. But I, 
I get it. You can you can get it. You understand. It's not it's not uh-huh. a, it's not an uncommon reference, Robert. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I yeah, I get so it. like yeah, it's an elf rogue. It, it adds to your party, and like you said, one one death touches for one have historically seen play from time to time. So this is also an elf. Like it's two relevant creature types. Seems good. It's a it's a party member that you can play on turn one. Yeah, how many exist? Tajuru Paragon. I'm going to put this without even reading it. I know this card is good. Uh, it is a three two for two with kicker three. Uh, it is also it is a, it is an elf with no creature type, but it says Tajuro Paragon is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard, so it will always count towards whatever party member you're missing. Uh, keep in mind that even though it is all four creature types, this doesn't just give you X's four for the party type relevancy. It has to you have to have cre- yeah, that number of creatures, one, yeah. not number of types. Uh, when Tajuro Paragon enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, reveal the top six cards of your library. You may re- put a card that shares a creature type with it, which is any of them, mostly, uh, from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you're going to get three two for two that has all creature types, which is already pretty good. Uh, but for, for five mana, you get a three two for five that draws you a card. So... Yeah, I, I think you look at this and... Um... I, I, to me, this is a two mana three two that is a party. The five is great late game, but like, how often is that gonna? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not impressed by this card. I think, I it's, mean, good I think it's good. I think the 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 ability to like be any creature type is also good. I mean, like, this is this might be the better than than Tazri, the white party legend. Yeah, I, I I think that sounds accurate. I don't know about that. Oh, wow. Okay, my bad. Well, I mean, one's a 4-6. One's a two-mana card, Robert. Jeez. The other one can cost four. You're telling me if I offer, if I said, Franklin, you can only have one creature in your deck, you can have a two-mana 3-2 two, or a four-mana 4-6. Four, hmm. hmm. Okay, I'll think about it. Yeah, get back to me. Tajuru Snarecaster, a 1-4 for three. It has reach. <laughs> think about it. You think about it. I'm going to go to the next card. It's Taunting got reach. Arbor Mage. 2-3 three for 3 with Kicker 3. So it, for 6 mana, when it enters the battlefield, all creatures able to block target creature this turn do so. This is this is, this is is going to... We're just going to win people a lot of limited games. Yeah, for sure. They're like, all right, kick Taunting Arbor Mage. Guess you're dead. Yep. Okay, cool. I can't block anything else. Territorial Scythe Cat. 2-1 for 3 with Trample. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on Territorial Scythe Cat. That's a big game. This one's close. A 2-1 for 3, and the first counter is not going to be put on until turn 4. So you're attacking with a 3-2 on turn 4, which isn't super impressive. I think uh, we're about to see a better 3-drop for, for in, in green, so I, I don't think this is good enough. Okay. All right, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait because I, like I feel like you're peeping ahead, bro. No, I'm not. I just know we haven't seen it yet. So Turn Timber Ascetic. 5-4 five, for 5. When it enters the battlefield, gain 3 life. This is actually pretty much like uh, Thrag Tusk, I think. So it's probably going to see some amount of play. Mm, no. Oh, yeah. I didn't think so either. I was just kidding. <laughs> Bastwood Surge. 4 mana with Kicker 4. So 4 mana or 8 mana. Search your library for up to 2 basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. I like these 4 mana. Search for 2 land. Like the, I, I, I like these cards. Yeah. Um, because I think being able to go from like four to seven is really strong in the green decks, but I don't think these cards at four mana are really that busted, right? So like this is like a good rate for for searching for two basic lands. If the spell is kicked, put two one one counters on each creature you control. That's pretty strong. It is because this card is made not for ramp decks; it's made for kicker decks. Kicker decks. Kicker decks. Does it go on the list? No. Okay. Oh man, probably the best thing about the new set, which in my opinion is a bit underwhelming. Your set hmm? musical. That's funny. I think this set is great. Yeah, that's interesting that you that's, feel that way. That's funny. But I really, uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for saying so. Pez. Pez? Pez Mananas? Pez Mananas? That's hard Pez to say. Pez Manahana. Veteran Man- Adventurer. Manana. Six mana for a six, for a five, five. It is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. Uh, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party and vigilance. This is just the green version of this card. So four mana five five. Like I don't I don't think that's a that's good enough. Really? Because Juzam Jin uh, begs to Who? differ, Rob. Juzam Jin. Who? Juzam Jin, Robert. How old is that guy? He's like twenty five years old or <laughs> something. Just don't worry about it. Let's go to the next card. Yeah. 
Vine Gecko, 2-2 two, two for 2. The first kick spell you cast each turn costs 1 less. Hmm, okay. Whenever you cast a kick spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Vine Gecko. This card seems good. It does, why doesn't it... Yeah. Like, sometimes say, one, is... one mana discount on a kick card could be a really big difference. Well, that adds up. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Two of these is big time. Oh, I like that. Plus, they both get counters? Yeah, this is good. I'm going like to put this. it on the list. Put it on the list. I like kicked cards. Do you? I do. Okay. I feel like we've, we've gone through this. Balaged Recovery. Rob, we're in the we're in the double face cards now, bro. Wait Those a minute. Cards. What? Where's the 3-3? Three, three? What 3-3? Three, three? The three mana 3-3. Three, three. Is he is he a land? Let's go through the lands. Balaged Recovery. This card's amazing. This card's so good. Yeah, this is real good. Okay, so Recollect, which is a card that exists, and Regrowth, which is a really good card. Uh, that's what you have on the back of this card for one more mana. Oh, not, not, one more, not one more, the Recollect, because Recollect costs three. But this is literally just a Recollect that also has a land on the other side. It's, yep. not, it's not target permanent. It's not target creature or land. It's you literally can have whatever you target like. card. A spell. You can get whatever you like. That's right. This is definitely, this is definitely good. I like yep. it. Balagid Sanctuary is the back. Add a green. Kazandu Mammoth. This is the card Rob was looking for, I think. Ah, uh, here it is. Yep. Uh, again, a 3-3 three, three for 3. It's a great rate. Whenever a lander is a battlefield under your control, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. This guy attacks as a 5-5. Five, five. Or, it's just a land. It's a large gentleman. Again, really, really good. Really, really good, but not broken. I'd have Still to, dies I'd ha to all the spells that that kill three three power three covered mana cost creatures. Yeah, I'd have to see like I'd have to get a good uh, I'd have to get a good understanding of the the scale of how large that thing is. But I would touch it. Not in the front though. I I'd mean, you kind of know how big mammoths are in general, right? Yeah, I'd touch it. <laughs> Kazandu Valley is the other side. It's it taps for green. Colony Ambush. A three mana. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. This is good. Again, it's a removal spell at this instant speed on the back of Colony Territory. So it's just a land. These this whole this whole cycle of cards is so wonderful. Colony Ambush goes on the list. Tangled Flora Hedron. This is also decent, right? It's a two mana one one. Yes. It taps to add a green. It's like it's literally like you know any two mana ramp, any two mana creature that taps that uh, mana, which are historically playable. They've been played. It's it's not Sylvan Carry added, but Sylvan Carry added is still a two mana ramp card that gets you to four. This does that, or you can just play it as a stupid land. Do whatever you want, man. Yeah, uh, Joe. Joe C. How does this work with Blood Moon? They're they're non basic lands, so they would enter the battlefield untapped, yes. and they would just be um, mountains. Yeah. And you, your, your Kinney. How do these work? So basically, your the card. Ew, the, your skinny is his name. Is that an S? It looks like an A. You also said McAllister didn't have an A, so I'm pretty sure your your laptop just isn't able to see S's. That's insane. I think your S visuals are not are not working correctly. That's really sad. No, my name is Mike. It's true. His name is Mike. <laughs> His name is Mike G. So Mike G, the way that these work, why is everyone named Mark? The way these work oh, is it is it, works. it is not a land in your hand. It is the Tangled Florahedron. However, you have the option to play it as a land in your hand, as a land on the battlefield. <laughs> Mossy Beard said that in Ain. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we have a good time here, guys. I love you all so much. Okay, Tangle Floor Hedron. This is going on the list, right? It's still good. Yes. Yeah. This is great. Uh, oh, this one I like a lot, dude. This reminds me of Vivi. I think it was called Vivian's Invocation, where it was like seven mana. Vivian. I'm gonna look it up. So the art a... looked the same. It had that green, like uh, elemental looking art. That's why. No, it's the same. Like they're both seven mana. Vivian's Invocation was seven mana. Oh, they do both have like a like a spirity type green creature on the front. Yeah. They're both seven mana sorceries. Turn Timber Symbiosis, four green, green, green. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Vivian's Invocation, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Invocation, you may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Oh, wow. 
Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That's from Vivian's Invocation. Uh, when a creature is put onto the battlefield this way, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. So it bites another creature. Turn Timber Symbiosis instead. Uh, if that card has a converted mana cost three or less, it enters with three additional 1-1 counters on it. So if you get like Kazandu Mammoth, for example, it's a 6-6. Six, six. And then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Um... So, yeah, it's very similar to Vivian's Invocation. They're both seven mana cards. You look at the top seven cards. You put a creature from among them. Put the rest on the bottom. One of them bites. One of them puts three additional counters if it's a, if it's a low-cost creature. But I'm all, I'm all about the cards see the unwritten, so I'm all in on this. Oh, but did you also know that if you draw this in the first, like, four turns of the game, you can just play it as a land instead? That's good. Let me tell you one of the worst parts about Magic. When you have cards like Emrakul or Cruel Ultimatum and they're in your opening hand and you kind of have to sit there for seven turns doing nothing with them. Um, these now cards, you, you can just play it. Can you imagine if Cruel Ultimatum was a crumbling necropolis on the back and you can play it as like a Grixis land? Oh, you just made a mistake. I what? think you just spoiled future sets. Well, you're welcome. Holy cow. I'm free. I'm free for freelance work, Wizards. Yeah. Turn timber symbiosis, but the point is like the, the like that's the thing. Like I know, um, I know deck building. You don't want to have too many of these in your deck because you'll spoil. You like you want to be able to to draw the ones you want early, but you know not draw too many seven drops early. Like I know I that's part of, of deck. I, I know that's part of deck building, right? Like that's that's one of the challenges of Magic. But I really don't think this ruins that because like. You still have to decide how many turn timber symbiosis do I want in my deck? Two? Four? Right? Like, but do they do I play them in addition to my my 24 base lands? Like, do I play 28 lands? Do I do they take the place of four lands? Are they gonna take like like but but then how many how many dual color lands do I put in, right? Do I do I take it's there's a lot of questions still, I think. We're still having to learn like where these these dual face cards fit in. So and obviously, turn timber Semper serpentine wood. It uh, comes into play untapped if you pay three life. Vast wood fortification, I assume, will be the last one. One green. Put a one one counter on target creature at instant speed. This is real good. Is it really? This seems like a really weak one, actually. No, I think that I think that this one's actually very good. Really, I do. Explain it that to me. because it, it it's it's it can be a counter spell. It can be a blowout in the battlefield. Like this, okay. this one's really flexible. It's an like instant, instead of dealing it, three, like you're like okay, make it a four four. Yeah, if 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 this was a sorcery, it's crap. But as oh, an instant, it, it counters it's... heartless act too. Yeah. Oh, yes, it does. They're like, oh, kill a creature with no counter, and you're like, but it has a counter, and oh, now wow. it's larger forever. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, fuck. See, you just convinced me. I like it. I love it. Like I'm looking at this card, and I'm like, eh, it's kind of underwhelming. And you're like, no, no, it's actually good. And I'm like, oh, it is good. Wow, I didn't even see it. Fastwood Thicket, the other side. Let's get to the gold cards. Akiri, Fear Fearless Voyager. Three mana, Boros mana uh, for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. That seems good. I that's mean, very good. We're talking about equipment deck already, so like that, that's good. For one white, you may unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature and it gains indestructible so you could just so like if a creature is like it being blocked by like a 5-5 five five and it's a 4-4 four four, you can just unequip the equipment or if they just try to kill one of your equipped creatures you just save yeah. it like this card seems good this is good and of course someone like Brett in the chat is going to be like commander things <laughs> yeah yeah alright one down brush fire elemental 1-1 one, one for uh, red and a green with haste, it can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less, so you're always going to get in there on turn one with this guy. Never getting blocked. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Brushfire Elemental gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So it's just played a GOP. Good. This seems good. It's a hasty played a GOP that can't be blocked without first strike. This card's good. Yeah, it is. I mean, any creature that can attack between three, three, and five, five on starting on turn two is pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, um, <clears throat> cleric of life's bond. I like this art. Uh, a a black and a white for a two two vampire cleric. Uh, whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under your control, gain a life. So you know that cleric deck's building itself. Whenever mm -hmm. you gain life for the first time each turn, put a one one counter on this guy. So okay, 
Is this good? I think the card is good, but it's not a card that's just going to get played, right? Yeah. Like, you know there's always going to be, like, a red-green aggro deck in a format because it's super easy to build. But, like, this has to be a specific, like, black-white cleric deck. Yeah, I, I don't know about this card. Could be good. A lot of writing, um, a lot of interesting stuff. I just, I don't see it. It's not Soul Warden where, like, any creature gains life, which is big, so you actually <laughs> have to be, like, cleric. Cleric, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about this. I like it. I, I like it, but I don't know if it's listable yet. Okay. Grackma Skyclave Ravager. Uh, one black green. It is a 0-0 zero, zero Hydra Horror. It enters the battlefield with 3-1-1 counters. So it's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Whenever another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 one, one counter on it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Grackma. When Grackma dies, create an XX black and green Hydra where X is the number of 1-1 one, one counters on it. So this is a 3-3 three, three for 3 that when it dies always probably will always make a 3-3 three, three. this card's very good I agree I like this card a lot nature's little treasure wait 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 just got here could you go back into the server view again for me real <laughs> quick <laughs> yeah let's start over okay you're five hours late Grackma sky clave ravager so like what's cool about this card is like you look at this card and it's just pure value I mean even if it didn't have the middle ability it's just a 3-3 three, three for 3 that also leaves behind a 3-3. Three, three. It's good. This card is I like the, the definition. the worst. Yeah, I agree. This this card to me is the definition of like Abzan standard. Like the, car, the card is very good and it's super playable, but it's not broken. It's not Uro, right? It's, 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 it's more Siege the, Gang Rhino. Yeah, it's Siege Gang Rhino, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I just uh, like this right here is these are the cards that this should be close to peak power level on cards. We've just surpassed this card and this yeah, card's it's, really good. It's manageable and I feel like I don't have to deal with it seven times. I just have to deal with it once. Yeah, exactly. Cargan War Leader. Three, three for three. Man, so many three threes for three. Other warriors you control get plus one, plus one. I'd have to see warriors. I don't know. That's literally what it comes down to. Like a lot of the clerics and the warriors like they they can be great if there are you know shells for them, but they could also just be never they could just never see play right you know yeah. Kaza Royal Chaser one two flying haste for two for a for a red and a and a blue and this is the most Harry Potter card I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, tap it the next instant or sorcery spell you cast. Uh, this turn costs X less where X is the number of wizards you control as this ability resolves. So. <sighs> I don't know about this card. I, I don't I don't know how I feel about this card simply because you can't use its ability and attack. Well, I don't know how to tell you this. You're never getting a vigilant creature in blue or red, so. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think this is good enough. Hmm. I feel like the ability is just like too narrow. Like I don't know. It maybe if it said also if it said it didn't say the next instant or sorcery if it said instant and sorcery spells you cast for the rest of the turn until the end of turn like one spell I agree I don't think it's great I mean I, I think the 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 wizard decks that are already in standard or were in standard were just more way more aggressive than this and I'm like the last thing I want to be doing is attacking like they have Adelies and you're like all right opt exactly wizards lightning all my guys get plus two plus two attack you with all my dudes. And yeah. you're like, this guy's like, oh, make your wizard's lightning cost one less. And you're like, it's already it's already one mana, buddy. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Linvala, Shield of the Seagate. Rob, do you know what the power and toughness versus the casting three, cost four. is on this? It is a 3-3 oh. three, three for 3, Rob. Oh. Well, you said Linvala, so my first thought was 3-4. Isn't Linvala a 3-4? Uh, she's also a 5-5. Five, five. There's several Linvalas. There's a 4-4 four, four, one, too. Yeah. She, and she makes a 3-3. Three, three. No, that's the 5-5 five, five that makes the 3-3. Three, three. I thought it was, I thought she's a four four. I know that's why I'm correcting you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have to correct you. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgive you. Lin Vala, Shield of the Seagate, one white blue for a three three flyer. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, nope. Shoot. Oh, it's not going to happen. You mean? Yeah, sorry. Okay, I was like, wait, did I read it wrong? Choose target non-land permanent opponent control. So I'll choose your creature until your next turn. It can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Okay, so it det it detains one thing basically, right? Yeah. If you if you have like three other creatures, you need a warrior, a cleric, and a rogue. Sacrifice Linvala, choose hexproof or indestructible creatures you control, gain that ability till end of turn. So very much dauntless uh escort, right? Yeah. 
Giving Hexproof or Indestructible to your whole team is nice. It's also a 3-3 flyer for three, which isn't terrible. This is only good if there's a blue-white flyers deck. I don't think this is a party deck card. Is the is a 3-3 flyer for three along with the sacrifice to give Hexproof or Indestructible to your team not good enough? No, I'm saying I think that it is good enough, but only in a, like a flyers deck. Like, I, I don't... This and any, if anything, like in my opinion, this is like a two or three of it most in your seventy-five because you you're worried about shatter shatter the sky. I'm gonna put it on the list. You can put it on the list. I'll let you put it on the list. Thank you, man. Lull Mage is familiar. A two four for three. Oh man, the 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 Simic card really broke the mold here. Uh, one blue green for a two four. Tap it to add <clears> a blue <throat> or a green. Whenever you cast a kick spell, you gain two life. The familiar should have made uh, kicker spells cost one less. It kind of does. I mean, you tap oh, it. That's gr- true. I mean, it, it adds the mana for <laughs> that's you. That's true. That's true. It kind of does. Yeah. Is this good enough? No, not even okay. close. Okay. <clears throat> Moss Pit Skeleton. Wow, I haven't even seen this card. Two two for for two, black and green. Kicker three. If Moss Pit Skeleton was kicked, it enters the battlefield with three counters. This is Kavu Predator, right? Two two for two and a five five for five. Mm-hmm. Whenever mm-hmm. one or more one one counters are put on a creature you control. Uh, okay, so it enters the battlefield with the counters, so the counters are not put on this. Uh, if Moss Pit Skeleton is in your graveyard, you may put Moss Pit Skeleton on top of your library. I don't like cards that put things on top no, of No, I don't like that either. Nope. Like, this, we have to assume that this card is better than a random card we draw out of our deck, and if it is, I feel like we're already in bad shape. I don't even think this is broken if you, if it's in, if it's in your hand and not your top of your library. Yeah. I don't think, <clears throat> I, don't I don't like it. I don't think it's good. Nope. It's nice with Henge, Great Henge. Actually, yeah, it's pretty good with Great Henge because then you just get to, you'll always guarantee a creature that you can play and then you always get to ah, a card. Ah, that is true. I don't think that makes it good. It's the same thing as um, the two mana that you can uh, adapt and put a counter on and search for another one, kind of. Yes, 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 Whatever yes. you have, you can chain Gross together. Chamber Guardian. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah, it's still it's not good enough. Marasa Root Grazer, 2-3 two, for 2. Good rate. Green, white. With Vigilance, all right. Tap it, you may put a basic land from your hand onto the battlefield, or tap it, return a basic land you control to its owner's hand. So two of these allows you to trigger landfall every turn. Yes, but... I don't think it's good enough. I don't either, and if this said return a land you control to its owner's hand, I would have been real excited about this, because then you can return your spells. But it's really weird that it's, like, not... Actually, like, I I think that's an error, too. Like, I think that that should have been return a land. I don't think it's broken if you just start in, like, on turn seven. Like, because you have a 2-3. You're playing a 2-3 for two in your deck. Like, it's not super yeah. exciting. So, like, yeah. I don't know. It's not going on the list. Nahiri, no. Error of the Ancients. This is, like, the first... Is this, this is the second Planeswalker we've seen. The other one was Jace. Second one. The other one was Jace. Two red white for a four loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one created one one white core warrior token. You may attach an equipment you control to it. I mean, it's plus one, make a one one. Like, that's literally Elspeth... Herself. Elspeth Nidorant, right? Which is playable. Yep. You know, this is this is a this is a playable ability on a planeswalker. And you get to attach an equipment for free, which is a, a significant mana savings. Negative two, look at the top six cards of your library. You can reel a warrior or equipment from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library. So negative two, draw a card, basically. And if you're not drawing a card, you probably uh, built your deck incorrectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is unimpressed. Negative three. Nahiri deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of equipment you control. So at I, two equipment, I think you're looking fine. This neg- negative three deals four damage to a creature or planeswalker, I think. I don't think... I, I mean, a lot of people have said this card's really good, and I I, I mean, I, I think, think it's, it's good. okay. I, it's really I think I think when a card... Like Elspeth and Night Around, you can put it in any deck. You can put it in a mid-range green deck. You can put it into a control deck. It's a great card, right? Like Elspeth and Night Around is a classic four-mana planeswalker. You can give any creature flying, so it doesn't matter if you have warriors. Um, Nahiri is a build around card. Yeah. And so, like, you have to, it, it goes in a specific deck. You're not just going to toss this in your red white deck. I'm not no. going to just toss this in a cube because, like, see, it's not going to fit. See, I don't see the power level of this card being so high that I want to build an equipment deck. I don't think it is. But you know what, dude? I'm fine with Planeswalkers not having that feature right now. No, you're right. Any I card. think it's flavorful. I think the abilities are good. Um, negative two find Embercleave. I agree. That's pretty good. But again, you're not just like searching for it. You got it's got to be in the top six. 
So you've got to play a significant number of legendary Ember Cleaves in your deck. Like, there's costs. There's deck building costs to, to playing yeah, this mean, card. I mean, the other thing to think of is like you're talking about equipments. I mean, I get, I guess it allows you to fetch a, um, it allows you to fetch uh, a warrior. But, but like, how many equipments are we really maxing out in our deck? Six. Like that's right. Seems like, like, are overkill. you playing eight? Eight that equipment like in your deck? Overkill. Like a lot overkill. of them are legendary too. So like, yeah. uh, you know, like, I don't know. We'll see. I, I think it's should it go on the list. I think it should because I think it. I think it'll see play. Auto equip is another thing that's really good, but let's be honest, like a lot of the equipments that we saw in this set alone are, are auto equip. I mean, I know there's like Ember Cleave, but well, that auto equips by itself too, actually. Um, yeah. I don't know, like Helm of the Host, maybe something stupid like that. Is that even? I don't think that's. I don't, think that's standard. I don't even know when that was printed, but I, I did like that card. Yeah. Nissa of the Shadowed Bows. Four what? Lo- uh, Shadowed Bows. Four uh, loyalty for a two black green planeswalker. A landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a loyalty counter on Nissa. So she has plus one. Untap a land you control. You may have it become a 3-3 elemental with haste and menace. It's still a land. So basically you untap a land, attack for three. Uh, it has menace. It's it, it's it's only until end of turn though, thankfully. This is not like five mana Nissa where you just get yeah. infinite creatures. Uh, and then, you know, if you play another land, it gets, she gets another counter, so she goes up to six. So it's very possible to play this Nissa on four, plus one her, next turn play a land, and then negative five, which is you may put a creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control, which would be five at the time, presumably, onto the battlefield from your hand or graveyard with two one one counters on it. This seems like a fair Nissa. What? Like, compared well, I mean, to... I guess it's kind of fair. Is it not? Is it really good? I think that this card is very good. The hmm. the minus five ability, the ability to the ability to play this on turn five, play a fetch land, and then and then bring back a creature and neg it immediately seems very good. The black mana has no meaning on this card. It totally has meaning. Like you're you're reanimating you're something reanimating. negative five. Like you're putting a creature back from the graveyard. Like it's totally yeah. totally black. Um. I, I, okay, it's not broken. It's not. It's only as it's, good as what's in your graveyard. This card is not broken at all. No, but it's 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 very good. You're right. It's it's just very good. I think she the, I think Kruxa. it's fine. Good. Like it doesn't. She doesn't protect herself. She mm-hmm. doesn't make blockers. Mm-mm. Like, like if you take away the negative five, like this is just a card that makes three threes every turn that can't block, right? And they they can be blocked if you have two creatures. Like she's not putting any permanence onto the battlefield. You have to have cards in your hand or in your graveyard. You're not cheating your, your Gristle Brand in the play with this. Yeah, you know I, mean? I didn't like, realize it was in your hand also. That's that's even better than I thought. It is better, but like... Yeah. Okay, so negative five. You can put a creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control. Right? So like you're putting, what, a five drop into play on turn five? This is good on turns later. Like if you play this on turn eight, you might have something. If you go... If you go, if you on turn eight, you have seven lands. You play Nissa, You play a land. But then you still have like... You're so, putting a creature into play equal to the number of converted mana, uh, equal to the number of lands you have, but you can just cast it at that point. Here's the here's the here's the one reason why I think that this is a little bit better than we think, is this card allows you to have a single turn when you minus that is fires of invention like you can have you can play ten mana worth of cards with five lands. Yeah, but it's one turn, and like the creature has to be in your hand and, or your grave. I don't know. Right? No, no, no. You're right, and I'm not creature. saying it's broken. I'm not saying it's broken, but I'm right. saying I, all I'm simply saying is I agree with you. I think this is a this is a very good card. I don't think it's broken. Nowhere near that. But I actually think it's a little bit better than we're thinking because I think when you're actually playing the card and you realize you can play two cavaliers in one turn, that's really good. <laughs> Cavalier's not even going to be legal, Rob. It shuffles uh, out with M20, okay? They're all 5-5s, five so I was just thinking two 5-5s. Five you know what I'm saying? Like, that seems really good. I guess. But again, like, the, one of the one of the things is that you can only cast creatures with it. Like, so it's it's significantly different than Fires. Fires was like, I want to play a 7-mana ultimatum. I want to play a 5-mana Nickel Bolas, you know? I, I wish the plus I wish the plus one was more impressive than just like it's the plus one's basically lightning bolt right plus one deal three damage to an opponent maybe yeah because you you don't like you don't get to keep the land yeah the plus one is kind of it's it's not bad but it's it's just not it's not great right 
like someone like someone says turn four take up turn five landfall negative five cast another but like that's assuming that like your opponent has literal nothing on the board to contest nissa because she's not protecting herself doesn't protect herself yeah like she does nothing like the problem is like you really have to have cre like I mean, that's just assuming that, like, is your opponent just have nothing? They don't get to interact with you in any way? Like, yeah. playing playing double Gargaroth is pretty sweet. <laughs> the, the minus five, five protects, her. protects her, but, like, you don't get We're to do that. We're talking about getting there. Like, you ha okay, if you play her on turn five and then play your land drop post Nissa, but then, like, you don't have a Nissa to protect. She dies because it's Yeah, the five. only way is if it's got, if you have a fetch land, that's it. Right, like, I don't know. I mean, like... But, like, again, if you're playing it... Okay, so A, let's say we're doing the turn five plan, where you're playing a Gargaroth and a Terror of the Peaks, right? One of those has to be in your graveyard. And since it's turn five, you likely didn't cast it and have it die. So you just got it in your graveyard somehow. I don't know how, because that's, like, really... You're really working for that. They could both be in your hand. They could both be in your hand, but if you're playing Nissa on turn five to put one into play... You might as well just cast that one because you're only getting one into play. Right. Using your example, you're not playing both because you tapped your lands for the Nissa. For Nissa, right. Correct. So, like, that's what I mean. Like, a lot of times people are like, well, you're playing a creature with Nissa, but you could just instead play that creature instead of Nissa, right? Like, that's that just seems better to me. Yeah, and then ticking down your Nissa to one loyalty potentially. Right. Like, it, it doesn't get it doesn't get two one one counters, but like, I also don't have to fill my deck with shitty Nissa. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't think this card's good. What? What? I don't think it's good. I, wait, I thought you said you thought it was good. You just didn't think it was broken. The more I'm, th yeah, but I'm working through it right now, and I don't think it's that good. I think there's there's so many situations where her two abilities, her plus one and her landfall ability, just don't do anything. Minus that, five like, is a lot too. Like you have to like it's not like it's minus. It, it, she comes in with four and right. it's neg neg three. You right. Know? Right. It's a lot. You're you're only gonna hit her neg five. Let's just be honest. If you play this card in your deck, and when you cast her, you're probably hitting neg five one time. And also, she's not protecting herself. If this was like neg five to get like any creature back from your graveyard, I'd be like, oh cool, I I can hit a Gristlebrand. But like for a Planeswalker that doesn't protect itself, I expect a really good negative five because she's vulnerable. Yeah. Like. But if I'm yeah, like, you've talked me off a ledge here. I don't know. Like, it just doesn't seem like... Yeah, you There's no situation where I'm like, four drop Nissa, plus one, attack you for three, and then, like, Nissa survives the next turn. Well, and, like, she, you're does, gonna go to your she does. All she does is make another three, three. Or you negative five her. She goes to, like, one, and you put a creature into play. All right, I'll, can I just kill that creature? Like, all yeah. right, big deal. You could have just cast it with your mana. I don't know. Yeah. Like, we, so, that, we... like, most of the time, you're putting two creatures into play instead of one on the next turn. Yeah. And then, like, all right, I can still wipe the board or kill. Like, it's whatever. I don't know. I, don't, I think yeah, it's I, garbage. I, yeah, I don't. I, I mean, it'll see play. I think people will try it, but I don't think it's. I don't think it's. It's crazy. So I'm not even putting her on the list because she's trash. All right, cool. Prove me wrong, chat. Prove me wrong, YouTube comments. Omnath, Locus of Creation. God, Locus. Omnath gets crazier in every set, man. Red, green, white, blue. Om Omnath is everything but black. Four, four. When Omnath, Locus of Creation, enters a battlefield, draw a card. Okay, so 4 4 4 4 that draws me a card. I'm already on board. Yeah. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, gain 4 life. If this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. So the first time Landfall resolves, you gain 4 life. If it's the second time, you add 4 mana. Green, red, white, and blue. If it's the third time... So with like an uh with like a fetch land and a rampant growth or like one of the cards that like put two Uro. lands into play, or like uh the new Harrow right yeah. If it's the third time, Omnath deals four damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you don't control. Jesus, this seems good. This card's stupid. This is this card stands out above every other card to me. This card, one of the this things I'm glad like about is one. sorry. The thing is like no no, no you were, you were talking first. I was interrupting yeah. you. I apologize. Um. All the elementals, the good elementals, are rotating out with M20. So yeah. there's not going to be like a really strong elemental deck. But this is just like a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, four. This is just a good card. You don't need elementals. It draws you a card when it comes into play. So it's it's kind of like a, a bigger, bigger, less, fewer card Muldrifter. But then like even if you only get one land into play every turn, you're still gaining four every turn from this. Like, this card's really good. Uh, 
I think it's really good. I like this card a lot. Even if it's not like super constructed playable, at least this card does cool things and I feel like I'm like pulling ahead when I'm playing it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just said super not playable. I think this is 100% playable. I think that... I agree I think with you. This is the but best I'm card saying that like, I'm saying like, even if like it's not, like even if it's only in our mind, it's too hard to cast, whatever, I still think it's cool enough. Whereas like the Nissa, I don't think it's even like doing anything super cool. Like, yeah. oh cool, it reanimates something. All right. Dude, the fact that this thing deals four damage to each opponent and their Planeswalker just for playing a land, like, holy crap. Well, playing like, three lands, to be fair, but still. Still, I mean, that's... Still. There, we've seen plenty of ways to get extra lands on the battlefield. I mean, like, and it's, and, and you're you're gaining an advantage because of that. You we know got whole I mean? sets about playing extra lands, you know what I mean? Yeah, this card, I, I think that this is the best card in the set. <laughs> Fourth time, Jizz Pants. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the fourth land you've played... Change your pants. Ora, like uh, this is clearly a marine. Skyclave Hierophant. Two black white. Four mana for a three three life linker. It's a core cleric, so it is a cleric. Whenever Ora uh, or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. So as a four drop, if this dies, you can get a three two or one mana cleric right into play. Um, I, I like this card seems too overwhelming for me to even sit down and try and figure out how to break it. It's like that. It's it was a scrap heap trawler. The, yep. uh, the scrap artifact trawler. that was like three mana when it dies, you put a two mana artifact into play from your grave. And you're like, <gasps> cause like all the combo, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a big brain combo player. So I don't want to like figure out like, what if what does this do? And I bring this back and I sacrifice it to this. And I get two mana that I play again to get it back. Just, I don't care about all that shit. I just want to play cool cards and, and attack with them and block with them and win the game. Yeah. Yeah. This guy, this guy definitely will see play. I definitely think that this, there's potential for this card to do something nutty. I just, I haven't taken the time to look it up. I mean, this is a card like it's a three, three life like a four, which is fine. It's not great. But the fact that like when they kill it, you can get a three mana, like probably a three mana, three, three. It's I assume, um, and this does make the 2-2 two, two for 2 that we saw a lot better. Yeah. What do you think? You guys on the list? Yeah, it's definitely going on the list. Put it on the list. Oh, raw Skyclave. Ah, uh, look. Apparently, they uh, that had to be Gottlieb's list. Uh, Jedi Django said, did you see the Lithoform deck? No. 100 mana is pulling killed by flinging... Oh, wow. Because you just uh, pump rat, rat over. See, I don't have big brain plays like that. I, I, I don't. I can't be like, what other eight cards does this combo with that I can kill my opponent with on one turn? Like, I just don't. Yeah. All right. Okay. 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 It's Ura with her. Oh, my bad. Phylath World Sculptor. I'm going to put this on the list, too. I don't even care. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hey, Rob, have you ever wanted to play Avenger of Zendikar, but don't you wish it cost six mana? I'll be honest with you. No, I've never wanted to play Avenger okay. of Zendikar. Well, you ruined my, you ruined my oh, infomercial moment. Ask me again. Hey, Rob, you ever had Avenger of Zendikar hand, in your hand and you wish it cost six mana instead of seven? Yes. Well, now there's a way. With Phylath World Sculptor, for only six mana, you can get the same 5-5 five, five body for one oh. less mana. I love when a five five world sculptor enters the battlefield. Create an O one green plant creature token for each each basic land you control. So basically, Avenger of Zendikar. The but wait, there's more. With landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put four one one counters on target plant you control. So <gasps> instead of going wide with Avenger, you're going tall. Four. I didn't know this. It was four, dude. I swear. I thought that it was just, I thought it was the same landfall trigger just with basic lands. Holy cow. Four. Keep in mind that, yes, yeah, someone mentioned that it is, you get Owen green plant tokens for each basic land you control. So it does, it does benefit you to play basic lands, but this is still real good. It's good. It will see play. I agree. I think this will see play. Put it on list. <laughs> no, make it taller this way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you got it, Kevin. All right. Yeah, this card's on the list. I think this card's good. Uh, Ravager's Mace. A one red black in equipment. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to a creature. This is just the theme. I wonder if this is how all equipments are going forward. They're just automatically going to equip? Maybe. I guess you can't do it with all of them. Because like, if you auto-equip like a card like Helm of the Host, it's pretty bad. Yeah. 
And by, by bad, I mean it's really good. Uh, <laughs> equipped creature gets plus one, plus oh for each creature in your party and has menace. So again, we're assuming plus two, plus oh, and menace. The menace is good. I think also, it's only good It's only good if you have creatures that are doing something when they connect. I don't think it's good just to get the plus two, plus oh. You don't, you don't think uh, dealing damage is a good way to win the game? No, not, not for an extra two. No, I don't mm -hmm. think so. But also, like, I mean, the equip cost is four, which is a lot. So mm -hmm. once they kill this guy, if they kill the creature you put this on, like, how many how many times are you really going to equip this in a game for four once. mana? <laughs> Maybe. I don't ever see a turn where I'm like, oh, I got four extra mana. I mean, I guess if you have nothing to do, but I don't know. Yeah. It's not going on the list. Soaring Thought Thief, 1-3 Flash Flyer for a blue and a black. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards, it gets rogues you control, get plus one, plus O. Oh. Whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards. Wow, so you can mill, so you can play the one mana one that becomes a 3-2, and then this card, that's 2-4, and then attack, and you already triggered it on turn three. That's eight cards. Okay, don't forget, it says whenever one or more rogues attack, each mill, each opponent mills two oh, cards. Oh, okay. So it's not per six rogue. Cards. You'd have yeah. to cast a three-drop rogue and then attack, and that would be eight. If this was per rogue, that'd be pretty sick. You're like, I'll mill you for six every turn. Yeah, that's bonkers. The problem is that this is also giving plus one, plus O to your rogue. So, like, it's kind of... There's this weird tension where you're, you're both increasing your attack power, so winning by life, but then you're also milling them, so you're trying to win by... Like, it's like... It's None really of these weird. are made to mill, though. They're only made to, to, to mill to, to trigger. Okay. I think they're... Honestly, I think it's because of, like, cards like... Uh, what's the green black... Uh, green black. Uh, what's the blue black card? The counter spell or destroy a creature? Drown like, in Sorrow. Drown in the Lock. Drown, drown in the Lock, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's literally for cards like that. It's letting you play, like, you know, older format mm, style. I kind of like that. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Uh, what was the... Good enough? Oh, yeah. Again, I, I definitely think there's this... a blue-black rogue deck. All right. I'm going to put it on the list again. Yeah, there is. There's definitely a blue-black rogues. Okay. Well, there you go, Rob. It's on the list. Mm -hmm. Get out of your laboratory once in a while. Spoils of Adventure. Four blue-white for an instant speed. This spell costs one less for each creature in your party. Gain three and draw three. This card, I think this card's great. Uh, yeah, this card is very good. <laughs> Even at six mana, like, cards like this already see play. Like, there's the card that's, like, six mana sorcery, it's draw four, right? Or, like, you know, Jace's Engineer. Like, these these cards, like, this rate for six for, uh... Wow, that's a really nice office. This yeah. rate for three cards and three life is just fine. And if you have, like, one or two party creatures in your deck, like, that are on, on board, like, it's, it's four mana. Instant. It's an instant. Yeah. So good. This is literally X equals three for Sphinx's Rev, yeah. Uh, if it would be blue, blue, white, three for Sphinx's Rev. So it would still be six mana, you gain three and draw three. Like, it's really good. The rate's already good for a control deck, and the life gain is nice. It's on the list. I like this card a lot. Yeah. Umara Mystic. This guy is literally surfing on this, on this Ray, on this Drake thing. One, three for white, blue, red, flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcerer or wizard spell, Umara Mystic gets plus two, plus O until end of... This is just we Dragonauts, right? Yeah, just with a relevant relevant creature types. Yeah, six like Merfolk Wizard, right? Yep. I don't think that's good enough. No, I don't either. Okay. Okay, next one. Verizol the Split Current. I, I like the name and the art on this. X, green, blue. Oh, God. Rob. X green blue for a zero zero <laughs> legendary creature serpent. It enters the battlefield with a one one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it. Oh god, we're already it's, it's just hydroid crisis. Whenever you cast a kicked spell, you may remove two one one counters from the. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the. This is just too much work. Yeah, this is way too much work. Yeah, like I have to play this like probably for six mana, right? Like that's where you want to be. So it's a four four flyer. And then on turn seven, I have to have a kick spell. I have to kick it. I have to make this a two two to copy. And it becomes it. a two two. It's definitely not a Hydroid Crassus. Though. Yeah, and all you did was look at six cards in your library a second time to grab a creature. <laughs> yeah, it's not great, unfortunately. No. Thank you. No. Oh, that's interesting. It it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter for each mana spent to cast it. So it's it would be a 6-6 six, six for 6. That oh. does make it better. Yeah, that does, because you could play it for 3 mana and then make it a 1-1. One, one. That's interesting. Billy, what up, my dude? Welcome back. Thank you so much for your sub, buddy. Good to see it's you, my dude. It still sucks. 
I still don't think it's great. Yeah, four minutes. This minute is like the, the extra form. step. This it's is like the f- extra step that you don't it, want. Oh, you know what? You know what's the worst part about this card? It doesn't fly. I thought it flew because it's like literally it, in the. It can, it's like it looks like it reminds me of a, a champions of Kamigawa dragon. Uh, I was saying a three mana makes a makes a one one because you can you be removing two counters to copy it, so it becomes only a one one. I don't think it's great. No, this is not good. It's it's, I think this card's great. Yasharn Implacable Earth, two green white for a four 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 mana four four, for an elemental boar. I I think Rob is an elemental boar sometimes. Spirit when Yasharn animal. enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic forest and a basic plains. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So you're getting you're drawing two. Like it's kind of like a mall drifter. They're basic lands, but a card is a card in Magic. Players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. So you can't... I, you know what I just realized? This doesn't allow you... Does this allow your lands to come into play untapped? Can they pay three life for their land? To sec, uh, players can't pay life. No, you cannot pay life. But is that... Are you activating an ability? Does it say pay three life, untap the land? Or pay three and it enters untapped? Because if it says if it enters untapped, then you would still be able to make your lands untapped. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, because, okay, I wasn't sure if that was exclusive. Players can't pay life, comma, or sacrifice non permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. If the, if it's the, if it's to cast spells or activate abilities, if that's also um, quantifying the players can't pay life portion, then yes. This card's really good. 4-4, four, 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 draw 2. That's all I need. The rest is the rest is just cool. Did you say 4-2-2? Two, two? No, four mana draw. Uh, four mana. It's a, I said four mana. Four draw four two? draw two. Yeah. Okay. I this mean, card's this card's good. still good. Yeah, this is really good. The land DTB. What is DTB? Our triggered ability is not activated. Oh. I have to read the writing on the land. Uh, they're not triggered either. They're not re- triggered nor activated. I don't remember how how they're how they're worded. Yes, this is a hard counter to John Citadel. Yep. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna look real quick. When lands enter the battlefield, either tapped or not tapped, uh, they're they're not triggered. Correct. No, it's the same as like it's the same it's as the like same uh, as a shock land. Like that's not a trigger. It's yeah, just nope. it's just how it enters the battlefield. Yep. The same way like a clone entering the battlefield is not a trigger. It's it's just how it enters the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. He's play- hey, We're pl- we're playing him. We're playing if we're we're in green white. Uh, Z- Zagras Thief of Heartbeats 4-4 four, four for 6 worse rate 4 black red spell costs 1 less for each creature card in your for each creature in your party flying death touch haste this guy needs lifelink um, so again we're hoping for a 4-4 four, four for 4 at best with flying death touch haste other creatures you control have death touch whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a planeswalker destroy that planeswalker this card is ridiculously good really? yes you you literally just said it. Four mana, four four flying death touch hate like death touch don't care. Flying haste. This card's really good. Like Interesting. Woo, this card's very good. This is good. It's got haste. It's good. It, it, if I'm casting this for five mana, it's good. Five mana, four four flying haste. That's really good, dude. Hmm. I like it a lot. I feel like there was another card that was a four four for five. The Drana was a four four for five, but it didn't realize. have haste. Didn't have haste. No, the it just only reanimates reason. something, Rob. It just puts a whole creature from your graveyard the following on the battlefield. Turn. This card's really good, dude. Also, being able to just hit any Planeswalker. Yeah, you only got to do one damage. Yep. All right, I'm going to put it on the list. Put it on the list. What if you just played a, a Jun deck with this and Questing Beast and all of your creatures had haste and they all killed Planeswalkers really efficiently? That's your choice. You can do it. Okay, I'm glad. Zareth Sand, the Trickster. 4-4 four, four for 5. 3 blue-black with Flash. 2, a blue and a black. Return an unblocked attacking creature. Attacking rogue to you control to its owner's hand. Put Zareth Sand, the Trickster, from your hand onto the battlefield. Tapped and attacking. We could just call this Ninjutsu. We don't have to do all this yeah. nonsense. Whenever Zareth Sand deals combat damage to a player, you may put target permanent card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. This card's busted. 
You think it's busted too? I, I, I freaking love this. I card, mean, if dude. there is a blue black uh, rogue deck, this is definitely a, a just so good, a, a really strong contender. Dude, you like you don't have to pay anything. Like you're and milling you're them milling already. Them. Yeah, that's yeah. The thing. You're milling them naturally. So like, this is so and good. it's a permanent card. So it could be yes. a planeswalker. At worst, you're getting a land. Dude, this this ninjutsu for four. Like like this is the kind of card when you play this when they play their their demir colored lands and you get to turn four and you're like, uh, they have a one one that's attacking me and it flies. I'm like, all right, am I gonna die? You know what I mean? You're like, well, now I am, because I guess they get my Elspeth Sun's champion out of the graveyard, too. Yeah, I'm saying, like, I know in cube when, when like, if game one your opponents hit you with, like, a, there's a lot of powerful ninjutsus. You, like, game two, when you're playing against it and, like, they're attacking with something that's not, that you're like, well, I guess I can't block it. Am I dead? You know, yeah, you right. Gonna, you're like, it? okay, cross my fingers. Yeah, this card, like, Awkward. instills fear, dude. Especially this card when, instills fear. Especially when you can look at your graveyard. Like, the other ones that reveal a card from your library and, and, and you know, you don't know what's coming. But if you know what's in your graveyard, like, that's that's really bad. And even still, five to hardcast, it still isn't bad. You just go end of turn. Flats. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. This card's good, dude. On to the colorless cards. Cliffhaven Kite Sail. One mana. When it enters the battlefield attached to a creature, again, stick into that theme. It, it. Creature just flying. So this is just an upgrade to... Uh, okay. or no, um, yeah, you know you know the one. Kite Sail. Yeah. Is it Kite Sail? Mm, no, I it's not. It, it, it is an upgrade, though. It, and the, Actually, no, no, no. The other one actually cost two and was one to equip. It literally is called Kite Sail. It's, oh. it's, it gets plus one, plus oh with Kite Sail, but uh, it also costs two to, two to cast, two to equip. Raggedy so. wings, yeah, it's something raggedy. That's right. Oh, let's look up wings. This is probably gonna be forty cards, thirty-nine cards with wings. Cobbled wings, Cobbled. two to cast, one to equip. This is one <laughs> to cast, two to equip. <laughs> raggedy wings. <laughs> I mean, it's not. We're not gonna play it, right? Um, no. The answer is no. No. Forsaken monument. There's two. The next two cards are both really weird like they're these are like the immortal sun type cards in the set and this they both it. feel more commander than standard you this know? is it this is five my card. mana for a legendary artifact forsaken monument colorless creatures get plus two plus two okay whenever you tap a permanent for colorless add an additional colorless okay whenever you cast a colorless spell gain two life i'm just not impressed with any of these abilities this is my favorite card in the set what this is my favorite card in the set okay i heard you but explain it this this card's incredible. The fact that it makes your your colorless lands, um, um, soul lands, like there are so many there are so many like think about how good uh, what's the name of the um, tempered steel? Like think of how stupid tempered steel is. Okay, but we're not talking about standard. This is standard. Tempered steel and standard. No, this is yeah. It does the same thing. But it, where's it, your art? What's your artifact creature base? Like that was in mirrored, and that had oh, like dude, a. There's, there's plenty like you have you have the the ginger brute like there's plenty of creatures the one four that untaps another artifact like there even one ones are good they become three threes like if you have tokens you know what i mean mm. like some sort of artifact tokens or something this card i love this card i'm gonna break it i may just cast ugin with it i don't know okay i'm gonna put it in the list for you cause... yeah stone coil that's a great one i i don't know i think that i think the I think this requires you about um, to play a bunch of shitty artifacts and hope that you draw this. And if you don't, you just have a bunch of one threes and one ones that don't really do much. Nah, I disagree. Okay. I think I, I think I can't really disagree because that is what that that is what happens. <laughs> I played I played enough uh, uh, Omori robots when when um, the Omori stuff first released uh, to know that you could pop off and there's like Mecha Godzilla like the mecha godzilla card like there's there's a good significant number of uh good artifact cards okay oh god rob what's happening man as i'm far I, cry I, now lithoform engine a four mana another four mana legendary artifact two and a tap copy and activate or triggered ability you control you may choose new targets for the copy three and a tap copy an instant or sorcery you control you may choose new targets for the copy Four and a tap. Copy a permanent spell you control. The copy becomes a token. Uh, it's too expensive for a standard. It's, play. it's way too expensive, right? Like four mana to copy a permanent. Like 
Okay, so if I copy a five mana permanent, it costs nine mana. It's just like a plant card. Like this is a planted like. It's a cool does. card. It's like yeah. hey, it's this is definitely a, a a gift to commander players. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, it's just like here you go. Here's a cool card. Copies all this nonsense. But. Yep. I mean, I'm not gonna put it on the list. I, mean, I don't. I don't. If it's a mythic casts, too, so it'll be expensive. If someone casts this against me and, con and constructed, I'm just gonna be like, eh, thanks okay. for the win. Like on it, and also on its own, it does nothing, right? So like on the next turn, if you copy something, it's cost you seven mana to copy an instant or sorcery, and that's you've gotten. That's all you've gotten out of just one copy. Myriad construct. I held. Four, I held that. Four. Kicker, three. So seven mana. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it for each non-basic land your opponent's control. So we'll say maybe like 3-4. Probably more than that, but yeah. Uh, when Myriad Construct Queen was the target of a spell, sacrificed it and created a number of 1-1 Construct Artifact Creature Tokens equal to its power. And that's pretty good when this thing dies and you leave behind 7 1-1s or something stupid and they all become 3-3s. Yeah. And, oh god. <laughs> like we circled back, guys. Also, one thing to keep in mind, as has been mentioned all over... Uh, you are able to target this multiple times. Yep. And if you sacrifice it once for the first ability or whatever that's targeted, it will still give you tokens uh, for each subsequent target. Yes. Like if I target it three times, the first time it will sacrifice, but those second and third targets also get tokens. So you so get you can... 12 one ones. If it's a four, four, right. Correct. This card's awesome. Yeah. It doesn't say if it doesn't say sacrifice it if you do create that number of tokens. You're always creating the tokens, but the only the first one will sacrifice this guy. So Yeah. Uh it's it's a really it's really strong. Yeah, this card's really good. I mean, even if you just played as a four 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 four, like you're still getting four one ones when it dies. Yeah. Hey, is um real quick, was Simulacrum in standard or was it in the one um like uh one of the Amonkhet blocks or I know it's not from Amonkhet. Currently but it was an M twenty one, right? Okay, it was okay. I was wondering it is how currently in standard. Yes, it will not be errated. No, it was it was made that way. Yeah, you also don't you don't errata cards in standard. You just you just either ban them or don't ban them because it's not um, mutate does not target. Mutate does not target. Right. Okay. Relic amulet two mana. When you cast an instant or sorcery or wizard spell, put a charge counter on it. Two and a tap. Remove all charge counters. It deals that much damage to target creature. I don't like it, it reminds me of like Dynavolt Charge Dynavolt whatever. Tower Dynavolt Tower yeah yeah. but like instead of one card giving you three counters for that this is like one card giving you one counter yeah I don't like it I do like that like if you have multiple of these one instant will put a counter on each yeah I don't uh, like that you have to remove all counters if they have a 2-2 two -two that you need to kill and you have five counters you're just like well it also does not hit planeswalkers or players, and I think yeah. that's the deal breaker for me. It should be damaged to anywhere. It's such it a should, slow card. It should like, be damaged anywhere. If you if it, if it puts one counter on per instant sorcery wizard, like it's just it's literally worse than uh, burning shrine, right? There's there's no way shrine in a burning creature rage. deck. There's no way in a creature deck you're taking a turn off to cast this. Right. I'm answering chat. Chat said this would be interesting in a wizard deck. No, this this if this is played at all, it's in a it's in a deck full of instants and sorceries. Well, yeah, but it also can't hit face, right? And that's what you want to do. You want to be super aggressive with the wizard deck. So yeah, if you have a Boros Reckoner in play, it deals damage to any target or a True Fire Captain. God, Kerwin. Oh no, that doesn't work. I don't think. Relic Axe, two mana. When it enters the battlefield, guess what happens? You, you attach it to, to a creature. It. Equip creature gets plus one plus one. If it's a warrior, it gets plus two plus one. This should cost one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's playable. Nope. Relic Golem. Three mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Whoa, this has got to be amazing. Relic Golem can't attack or block unless opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Dude, how far have we come with Millstone? Two and a tap target player mills two cards. This is, I mean, it costs <laughs> one more than Millstone, right? But like, I know. for one more mana than Millstone, you get a fucking 6-6 six, six eventually. <laughs> also, is this terrible in the Rogue deck? Like... In the rogue deck, they if they have eight, which is what you're going for anyway, this is just a six six for three. Um, I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's a three or four of maybe one, maybe two. Really? Yeah, you can't have too many of them. I disagree. If your deck is built around like triggering these like these when you have eight cards, like uh, being I'm able to slant pay six mana, put twelve power on the boat. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see it. I like it. A 6-6 six, six for 3, man. Like, that's a big dude. Oh, yeah. Relic Vile. 3 mana. 
Sacrifice a creature. Two and a tap. Sacrifice a creature. Draw a card. Okay. As long as you control a cleric, Relic Vile has whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one and you gain one. Hmm. I don't like that it costs three. It's too expensive. So it's kind of like a blood artist, but like it's an artifact that doesn't do anything on its surface. Yeah, I don't like it. I think it's a little clunky. I like Seagate it. Colossus. 7-5 for 7 mana. It's a Golem Warrior. That is interesting. It makes me wonder why Relic Golem was not a was not a rogue if Seagate Colossus is a, is a warrior. This spell costs one less for each creature in your party. So five mana, seven five. It's crap. It's not good. Skyclave Relic. There's a lot of relics in this set. Three mana, indestructible. Kicker three. So it's either three mana or six mana. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two un, two tapped tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic, and tap it to add one mana of any color. So this is a three mana mana rock that you can tap for any color that's indestructible if you kick it for six you get three of them and this is kind of similar to uh, this is on par with like gilded lotus you know what um, i mean like yeah. gilded lotus is three mana for five this is three mana for six but they're all three of them can be tapped for different color mana and they're all indestructible it's interesting. I, I mean, I think it's cool. I think you'll see play um, in weird formats like Cube and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting that you can make multiple colors because you get multiple list. copies of it. Put it on the list, yeah. I'm putting it on the list because Coalition Relic and Chromatic Lantern would always see play in Standard when they were printed. And uh, I think the flexibility of this is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously Guild of the List gives you 3 immediately, but like the, the number of times you're able to use that is, I think it's pretty low. Skyclave Sentinel, 3 mana for a 2-3, Flying Defender, Kicker 4, so for 7 mana, it enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one -one counters on it. As long as it has a 1-1 one -one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So it's a 7 mana 4-5 that can attack, or a 2-3 two -three for 3 that cannot attack. That's crap. Yeah. Spare Supplies, 2 mana for an artifact, uh, enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, sacrifice it, draw a oh, card. Oh, I love this card. Really? Love this card. Yes, I love this card. I'm telling you that I'm going to make an artifact deck, and I love this card. Why do you love this? Because it's two mana draw two. It's four mana draw two. Well, it is, but it's but it it in the end it only it only requires two lands to do it. Huh. I like this card a lot. Well, I don't think this is a nerf to Wellspring because Iker Wellspring literally required you to have other cards to draw that second card, whereas this just you just. Yeah, it's funny that you like this for four mana. A total investment of four mana to draw two. But that divination you didn't like to draw two because there's only three mana. And later you can kick it to draw another one. I'm looking at artifacts because huh. the, the subtype or the you type. Want, you, want, you want me to put this on the list, Rob? Yes. You want me to put it on the list for you, buddy? This is better than Think Twice. Oh, well, it's not an instant. Um, yeah, I mean, the second half is, right? The first half is not. It's an egg. You're an egg. It's double. It's two eggs. It's like two eggs. Well, hold on. Eggs are zero mana cards. No, no. I thought eggs eggs were zero. No, eggs are like things like prophetic prism, terrarion, prophetic right, prophetic prism, chromatic star, chromatic sphere, things like that. Oh, cheer. I was confusing with Cheerios. I was. That's my fault. Cheerios are zero because they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Stonework pack beast two one for two. It is also a cleric, rogue, wizard, and warrior. Uh, two add one man of any color. So this is just better than Prismite, right? Mm -hmm. So in all our in all our decks, but we have Prismite, we can just replace it with Stonework Pack Beast. Uh, yeah, but it's also got a rele it's it's relevant uh, in limited for the the creature types. So that's pretty good. Okay. Utility knife one mana for an equipment when it enters the battlefield. You know what time it is. Attach it to a creature. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one, and the equip cost is three. Good and limited. Pack, be Pack Beast plus Seagate Colossus only reduces the cost by one. Base Camp enters the battlefield tapped. Add one colorless. Why is it interesting? you can tap to add one man of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard. Or to activate an ability of a cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard. This is crap. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't under tap. Like, this is sad because, like, even the ally land, that didn't end a battlefield tap. Like, there's always the uh, the there's tribal the tribal land in the set, right? And, like, they could just make it rare and not make it under tapped, right? 
<sighs> uh, is it good enough though? No, not even close. Really? No, not even close. Okay. Okay, crawling barons. Add one colorless mana. Okay, that sucks, right? Four mana. Put two one one counters on it. Then you may have it become a zero zero creature until the end of turn. So, first one, it's a two two. Maybe if you want it to be. Then it's four four six six eight eight. And you never have to make it a creature if your opponent has mana up or if you think it's going to be killed. Yeah, we talked about this on on Freshly Brewed. Yeah. This this is this is probably one of the best lands they printed in a long time. This card's awesome. It's very good. Yes. I'm actually surprised at how good it is. Like you're never you never have to like uh make it susceptible to the removal unless you're really safe. If you could, if you have mana left over at the end of the turn, you could always just pump it into this thing and make it bigger. Like Man, just... you, know, you know what makes this better? Whenever you have that five mana artifact that makes it tap for two colorless, and then you only need one more land to activate to put two counters on it. Okay. <laughs> Throne of McKindy. Add a colorless mana. Okay. One and a tap. Put a charge counter on Throne. Tap, remove a charge counter. Add two mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast kick spells. It's not I didn't... bad. I didn't play enough with um, with the charge counter lands to mm -hmm. know. Like I feel like nowadays we are so used to going turn two play a card, turn three play a card, turn four play a card. I don't really see where you're charging it now. When you're playing, right. I I do know like when you're playing like uh, is it like Dreadship Reef? When you're playing Control, it's easy to find time to Just put a counter um, on it. to put a counter it when you don't do something. But like for Kicker, I mean, I feel like we're playing cards up the curve. One thing to consider is that like this is one and a tap, so two two land investment mm -hmm. to activate it, and then tap it and remove a charge counter. So you're tapping three total lands to add two mana of any one color to cast only kick spells. Yeah. So in total, you are losing one mana. Like you're using you're losing one land activation by by like you know adding a charge counter to this and using it. I don't think this is good enough. I don't think so either. Mm -mm. It's 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 in the wrong car. It's in the wrong. It doesn't work with kicker. I don't think. Branch loft pathway, and boulder loft pathway are the green white land. So these are simple, right? These are just if you're playing dual colored, you're playing four of these. Agreed. Uh, next we have bright climb pathway with grim climb pathway. Got the black and the whites. And bright climb. Like, these are pretty much... I feel like these are no-brainers, right? Yeah, these are no-brainers. They're on the list. Yep. Uh, Clearwater Pathway and Murkwater Pathway. I used to live in Clearwater Pathway. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's blue-black. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Next. And it's weird that they only did six of these, because where are the other ten ever going to show up? And they're kind <laughs> of random, too. They're like three allied, two en three enemy... Crag Crown Pathway and Timber Crown Pathway also on the list. Needle Verge Pathway and Pillar Verge Pathway. And River Glide Pathway and Lava Glide Pathway. These are all good. They said other four in the next set. Oh, interesting. Oh. All right. That's weird. So the next set's also going to have dual face lands. That's cool. Man, I really appreciate you guys chiming in with the Mark Rosewater yeah. uh, commentary because sometimes it's really hard uh to keep up with all of it but yeah that's it that was the green the gold the artifacts and the lands thank you guys so much for watching these uh these these quite long zendikar yeah. rising series i'm really glad we broke it up into three parts because they were very very long but um there was a lot going on in this set like a lot more than normal i think it was a lot harder to evaluate because it's changing some fundamental mechanics in the game and uh hopefully you guys will let us know what you think in the comments below and you'll check out nordvpn.org slash Frank Lepore for 68% off a two-year subscription along with one month free. You can also check out manatraders.com with the link and promo code down below. You'll get 20% off the first three months of any subscription. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Thank Rob for being here. I really appreciate you, buddy. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.